What's up, Nerdyverse? I'm Daddy Louie, and in this video, we are taking a look at a game called Robotech Brace for Impact. So stick around. Before we get started, if you're new to our channel and you want to see more content like this, start now by hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. In case you aren't aware, Robotech is an anime that dates back all the way to 1985. Um, it had just three seasons, um, but the fandom is absolutely huge. Um, the art is still fantastic. And um, this game here that we're looking at today, Brace for Impact, uh, it is made by uh, Japanime Games. It is uh, 2 to 15 players, and I'll explain why in just a few minutes. Uh, it is for ages 10 and up and it takes exactly 10 minutes. Now when I say it takes exactly 10 minutes, that is because this game is played in real time. There are two rounds, each round is five minutes long, and you use a timer that is included in the game in order to keep track of that. Um, so you will have one player uh, playing as the villains, um, and then you will have the other uh, player, uh, or at least one other player playing as, um, the Robotech Defense Force, and um, you know the Robotech Defense Force will be uh, trying to keep their ship afloat while eradicating all the enemy uh, forces. Whereas the the uh, enemy forces will be trying to uh, take out the uh, the Robotech Defense Force's ship. Uh, the question is: Is this game any good? Well, if you'll join me on the table, we will check it out and find out. All right, so once inside the box, we have some really cool components that we have here. Everything is really high quality, um, which I like. Uh, the hourglass timers, I have a minor issue with those. I'll explain that in a minute. But um, So here we have everything that we need to play. First, let's talk about the cards. Um, so there's three main cards, uh, t card types that you're going to use during the game. First, you have your RDF actions. These are for the Robotech players. You're going to take this uh, giant stack of cards, shuffle them up, and then divide them evenly among the amount of players that are playing as uh, Robotech players. And then you have these two cards uh, types down here, which are going to be used for um, uh, for the opposing player. And uh, you have their, their ship cards, and you also have uh, the event cards. The event cards are shuffled and always shown face up so that everybody knows what event is coming up next. Um, and the, um, the ship cards are double sided. Um, one side is uh, to let the, uh, the Robotech Force uh, players know uh, which, uh, what strength uh, could be on these cards. So you see here this is three to five. So that lets, the, uh, lets them know that they have uh, anywhere from a power three to a power five, uh, you know, enemy ship under there. There are six plus. There's also um, higher than that. I think six plus actually might be the highest. Uh, but they go all the way up to like a really high number. Like, okay, that one was just a six. <laughs> Let's look. Um, I think there's like tens and elevens. Yeah, there's a twelve, um, a fourteen. So um, that's what these ships are for. Now the Robotech action uh, cards, I'll explain how they work a little more in a minute, but um, they have different stats written on there. Let me focus this in so you can see. Um, the top two, uh, I guess, commands that you see up here or actions that you see, um, these are what someone on the team, whoever's the controller of this card, is going to declare uh, to the other players looking for someone else to help match that. Um, so they're like shouting out commands. Imagine being like on the bridge of a ship trying to return fire, fix things, repair things, scout stuff out. So for example, player one here, he would say, you know, incoming report of failing armor across multiple sections. So he's looking for someone to repair the armor. So one of the other players needs to play a card um, that has a command that matches that. So uh, let me scroll through the cards here and try and find one so I can show you. Um, 
right here. So player one would say, incoming reports of failing armor across multiple sections, waiting for another player to then say, replace armor plating now. These two cards would be played together and you would repair one of the armor plates on the ship. And that's really how the, the RDF team's uh, turn works. They, they spend their first five minutes and then the second five minutes going through these commands, trying to repair stuff, and also take out um, the enemy's ships that are coming in. Uh, so that's how these cards work. The last two sets of cards are optional. You do not have to play with them. The first few times that you play, uh, recommend that you don't use them, and then you can add them later. Uh, the first is um, the enemy gets to choose a commander, uh, which gives them uh, extra options. Um, there's a few here to choose from. And then they also have uh, enemy tactics. Uh, these are just more ways for your opponent to mess with you, basically. Um, so we'll omit these for uh, the purposes of this video, but just know that there are other optional ways of playing in the game. Um, and the art on all these cards is really, really cool. Uh, it's all from the anime, so um, you're getting uh, you're, you know what you're getting basically when you, when you get this game. All right. So next we have all of the tiles. Um, this large tile that you see here in the middle, this is the main ship tile. This represents, um, the SDF one. Uh, this is the ship that the, um, the RDF players are trying to protect. It has a, uh, spinning dial in the middle, uh, which serves two purposes. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, these numbers here are for you as the RDF player increasing the value of an attack against the enemy. Uh, these tiles here get spread around evenly around the ship, and these represent the, the sections or the sectors. Uh, they're called sector tiles. And these are the areas of the ship which the enemy will try to attack. Um, they can attach ship cards onto these um, so you can see there's eight of them, so and the enemy player can have up to eight ships on the, um, eight of their ships on the, on the main, uh, ship at a time. And then these tiles over here, there's four different types of tiles. You have the hull, the armor, uh, the reflex furnace, and the life support. These are the system tokens. These are the systems that, um, the, the enemy is trying to use to, uh, take out the Robotech player and the Robotech player is trying to repair um, and keep afloat basically to make sure that their ship does not explode. Um, I will explain these very briefly. Uh, the hull is the main attribute of the ship. Uh, you get seven of these tokens um, and how many you start with when it comes to all of these depends on the difficulty you wanna play and how many players you're playing with. Um, so um, the max that you're working with, I guess here is seven. If at any time your ship uh, loses all seven of its hull, the game is over and you lose. Um, armor is exactly what it sounds like. It will protect incoming uh, damage to the other three systems. So the hull, the reflux furnace, and the life support. Uh, life support is how many cards that you can draw when a draw card action takes place in the game. So um, again, this is there's a maximum of three, so you're gonna be drawing a max of three cards, but as life support gets taken out, these are double-sided by the way, this shows that it's working and this side shows that it's not. Um, so based on how much life support you have, that's how many cards you are going to be able to draw. And everybody draws the cards, it's not just one player. The Reflex Furnace is uh, a kind of a mini game within the game. Uh, whenever your reflex furnace goes out, uh, you take this green um, hourglass timer, which represents one minute, um, and you flip it over. And you as the Robotech player have one minute to get your reflex furnace back on uh, at 100%. If the timer runs out and you have not repaired your reflex furnace back to 100%, you automatically uh, lose the game. So um, there are multiple ways for the enemy to win. 
this is just one of them in addition to the hull. You can protect the reflex furnace with armor, but just know that that is, like I said, like a little mini game within the game, something that happens uh, or can happen uh, throughout. And then the last component that we have to talk about is these hourglass timers. Now these work just fine for keeping track of the, uh, the stuff that's going on. If you have um, little digital timers uh, that you can use, whether you know each player uses their phone to do that, I recommend using that over this because you'll have a um, you'll have a you know a reminder or like a, a sound that will buzz to let you know time's up. It's sometimes difficult to look at these and remember like okay you know time's almost running out. The other complaint that I have. Uh, or, or really the only complaint that I have about these timers is they're not labeled. Um, and there's, from what I could tell, unless I just completely missed it, but I checked several times in the rules, there's nowhere in the rule book that says, you know, green is this timer, yellow is this timer, red is this timer. So what I had to do was I had to time with my watch uh, how long these lasted and then mark with marker on the bottom. You have a one minute timer, a 30 second timer, and a five minute timer. So this is the Robotech turns um, timer. This is your reflex furnace. And then this is the, uh, the event deck from the enemy. Every 30 seconds an event goes off. Um, but it, had I not counted that, there's nothing in the rule book that tells me uh, what these are exactly. Again, unless I'm completely missing something somewhere, in which case, you know, I I retract my statement, but uh, I couldn't find it anywhere in the rule book. Okay, so let's take a look first at um, the tokens here and how the the system tokens and how these work. These are you know the most important part of the game because once you lose all seven hull, um, if you can't repair your reflex furnace, um, you lose the game and you start with these based on the difficulty and the amount of players. So there's a nice little uh, setup chart. Let me see if I can get that on screen there. Um, there's a nice little setup chart that you have here um, that shows um, three different difficulties. So you have training, veteran, elite, and then you have the amount of players, and then it tells you how to set up the armor. So for um, this video, we're just gonna assume we have a three player game in training. So we would start with all of the tokens, uh, three, 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 and seven, but one of the armor tokens is gonna be flipped over uh, as, as damaged, like you see here. So this is how we uh, start with our three player game setup. And on the Robotech player's turn, or, or during throughout the game, like I said, it's, your turn is the whole entire game. You you're keep going. Um, you're going to want to use these cards to shout out emergencies and have a command responded by one of the other players. So in a three player game, me and a partner would be working together playing against a third person who is trying to take us out. So right away, the very first thing that we would wanna do probably is uh, repair this armor just so that we're at full. Um, so we're gonna be looking for cards that say, our armor can't take much more of this abuse, anything basically that says armor plus one um, this is an increase to our armor or an armor repair. And then we would need a command somewhere in our hand um, that gives us the reinforce armor, um, the reinforce armor command. We would discard those cards and then we could flip this up. Um, all the meanwhile, the uh, enemy player is um, doing events and attaching ships onto our main ship so we also can attack. So aside from repairing and fixing things um, for the reflex furnace, the armor, the hull, the life support, we can also attack. And um, I will explain attacking now. So like I said earlier, um, the Robotech player has essentially two rounds, two five minute timers that uh, go back to back trying to uh, repair their ship using the using those system tokens that we talked about. Um, 
And if they can survive the full two minutes or the full 10 minutes, they win. Um, meanwhile, the enemy player um, is uh, the Zentradi player uh, is going to be um, sending out these ships onto the systems. So there's three ways that the enemy player can win. One is if they breach the, um, um, the refuse chamber. Um, or the reflex furnace, sorry. If they breach the reflex furnace, uh, which means that the RDF player cannot fix their um, furnace within one minute after it's been uh, completely depleted, if all seven hull have been broken, and, or if they can completely surround the, um, the SDF-1, the ship. So it has these sections here, and you start the game with two ships on it. So you have to fill up the other six before the RDF player can destroy your ships. Uh, you also have these events that happen every 30 seconds using another one of the timers where you can send out more ships, do direct damage to certain systems, uh, direct damage to the hull, etc. So let me first explain um, how you uh, set up these contact systems uh, or how you have more ships come in. So your hand uh, will have double-sided ship cards, like I said. And you have these uh, scouting symbols. These are for the RDF player. But on the back side, you have these fighter ships that are going to do certain things to, um, to the SDF-1. So like this little guy here, he has an attack. He does three damage to the hull. But he's... He's small in size. This is the amount of damage he can withstand before he's destroyed. So the um, the RDF player needs to try and reveal these ships so that they know how much damage that they're going to attack, but they don't have to. Um, so for example, if this, uh, if this player here wants to uh, send out uh, Super Valkyries, uh, to attack a sector he's going to get two damage and he's looking for someone to give him the command to uh, to attack so this command here would say lock on and attack those targets so these two cards would be discarded together and right now we have two damage that player would then get to spin this dial here in the middle and would get to add three to it and they would pick which one they wanted to attack let's say they want to attack this one it reveals that it was only a three, um, which is lucky on their part. They would then destroy this ship, freeing up one of those sections. Um, if they had flipped over this guy, who is five health, nothing would happen. Uh, the damage would be deflected and this guy would stay here. Um, but that would be how you could, that's one way that you can reveal what these are. The other way is by scouting. Uh, scouting is another um, command that you can give. Uh, like here it says we need cat's eye scouts deployed to sector 8. And then you would need a uh, scout command here. Launch scouts to support the advancing Valkyries. And you would then get to uh, do the bonus, which is on this side here. It says repair. So you could repair any one system and then you reveal it that lets the uh, SDF player how much know how much damage they need to do in order to take that ship out. Now earlier, uh, you know, note that I said that there were some ships that were like 14 damage or something like that. There is a, um, at the five minute mark when you flip over, there is a cannon that is launched that deals a substantial amount of damage. That's how you would use to uh, take out uh, bigger ships. You can also concentrate all firepower. Um, if somebody yells out concentrate all firepower, then everyone on the table who is playing can throw in a card in order to um, in order to show uh, to add up a total which would then get spun with this and you could do a massive amount more damage. So if you had a bunch of people every you know if you were playing with five or six people and everybody had stuff with like threes and twos, you could throw all those together concentrating firepower to take out a bigger uh, ship. But in smaller games, you don't play with bigger ships anyway, so um, it's not as much of a concern. But when you're playing with more people, you're going to get those bigger ships. 
you're going to need those concentrate firepower commands. There's also a brace for impact command. Uh, brace for impact lets you absorb more damage in the event that the um, uh, the Zentradi player, the enemy player, is um, making further advances. So the game is played in this simultaneous real time you know uh, way where you have one person who is commanding these enemy forces trying to attach onto the ship deal damage to the ship take their their systems down whereas a group of players two or more um, are working together using these command cards to yell out emergencies and get commands from other players to fix those emergencies deal damage scout the players uh, or scout the enemy ships so on and so forth. And that, guys, is Robotech Brace for Impact. Um, the other thing that I want to mention real quick is on the back of the rule book uh, for this game, they mention a soundtrack available that you can um, play in order to um, have these event cards go off on their own without having to have... Um, a player, you know, revealing them every 30 seconds. You just play this soundtrack, and the soundtrack kind of runs you through what's happening. Um, I couldn't find that anywhere. It references a website. I checked that website, as well as the manufacturer's website, the developer's website. I checked everywhere. I can't find that audio track anywhere. So I don't know if it's just not available yet. This game is relatively new. I think it launched in March of this year. Um, so it may just not be available yet. Um, but that is something that I really wanted to kind of try out that I didn't get a chance to. Uh, so hopefully that will be available very, very soon. Or maybe I just missed it. Um, aside from that and the small grievance that I have with the timers, uh, I really like this game. Um, I'm a big fan of Robotech. Um, I love the anime style. I like the art. Um, I like that it's played in real time, so I have to make decisions on the fly. There is even a way to pause the game. They've explained the in the rule book how to do that. Um, but it, it is a lot of fun, and um, they do have two-player variants, uh, a two-player variant. So if you wanted to play with two players, uh, you could do that, um, and it explains to you um, how to do that in the rules as well. Uh, but overall, this is a fun game. I recommend it for people who enjoy the anime, um, people who enjoy uh, real-time games where there's uh, really no break in the action. And um, I also recommend it for people who just have a large amount of people that are playing at their table. It's not very often that you can find a board game that supports up to 15 players. So when you do and it's this good, um, it's definitely not something that you want to ignore. Like I said, this game is available right now. I will leave links to the product in the description below so that you can go and check it out. And a big shout out to Japanime Games for giving me the opportunity to check it out. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out a lot. Make sure that you share it with your family, friends, and your nerding communities. If you have any games that you would like uh, to see us cover here on the channel, you can let us know down in the comment section below. Uh, I do read them all and I love interacting with you guys. If you have any uh, videos you want featured on our page, if you want to collaborate with us, you can hit us up on one of our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Circle of Nerds. Also, don't forget we have a podcast that comes out on Tuesdays called The Cosmic Disaster Show. You can find that right here on YouTube or anywhere that you enjoy listening to podcasts. And for an extra bit of love and affection to the Circle of Nerds, please consider checking us out over on Patreon at patreon.com slash circle of nerds. Anyway, guys, that's all from me. I will see you in the next video.